Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless your name, God. We magnify you. If you can just give God his adoration this morning, wherever you are, if you're seated, just stand. For the King of glory has come in. The King of glory, strong and mighty, mighty in battle. Hallelujah. We reverence your holy name. Hallelujah. You are a good, good father on this blessed Sunday. You are a good, good father. We magnify you. We extol you. We honor you. We worship you. You are our father. You are the ultimate and supreme God. We bless your holy name. We thank you, Father. Father, we magnify you. Have your way in this place. Have your way in each home. Have your way in each sanctuary this morning. Let your word be your word and your bond be your bond. We thank you, Father God, for what you're doing in the midst of your people. We thank you that you're healing the sons and daughters' hearts. We thank you that you're healing the hearts of those that have father wounds on this morning. We thank you that you're going into every area of their lives. We thank you that you're going in and closing the door to destruction. We thank you that you're going in and closing the door to violence. We thank you that you're going in and closing the door to dismay and dismantling the enemy as he rises up against your children. We thank you right now, Father, that you are our guardian. You are our sponsor. You are the one that loves us. You are the one that guards us. You are the one that has kept us through danger seen and unseen. We magnify you on this day, on this great Father's Day. We give your name glory and honor. We love what you're doing in our lives. We love what you're doing in our lives. You're capturing us. You're cultivating us. You're nurturing us. You're giving us what we need this day. So we thank you, Father. We stand as your people that is in need of you. We need you, Father. There is none like you. There is nobody on this earth that is good at you. We magnify your holy and blessed name. We give you honor. We give you honor. We give you honor on this day because you are our father you are the ultimate sacrifice you sent your only son jesus to die on a bloody cross for our sins and we thank you no other father would have done that for us but you god you are the one that sent your son to die for such a soul as this and we bless you we are you we bestow your mighty name and we call you Abba Abba Father Abba Abba Father Abba Abba Father Abba Abba Father we thank you we magnify you have your way in this place in Jesus name amen hallelujah Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. I am arrested. I am arrested by your love, God. Thank you for loving me first. Thank you, God. It's one thing to love. But to be loved back, hallelujah, hallelujah, we're grateful for your love, God. Thank you, Jesus. So we pour our love on you, oh God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Just from my heart, I want to love on my father. Just want to tell 
tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything, more than anything, more than anything, yeah. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you.
I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Thank you, God, more than anything. Thank you, Lord, more than anything. Thank you. Nothing shall separate me from your love, oh God. No money, no fame, no houses, no cars, no land. Nothing shall separate me from your love, oh God. Nothing gets in the way of our love connection, God. Thank you for your love, God. So I continually pour my love out on you, Father. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sometimes we can't even adequately find the words. So we express it, hallelujah, with our love, with our affection, with our adoration. We pour our love upon you, oh God. We lay at your feet, Father. We love on you. We give you our tears. We give you our love. We express it, oh God, with our being, with our obedience, God, because you're worthy of our love, Father. Thank you, not just on a particular day, God, but every day, oh God. Every day, Father. You're a good, good Father. Every day, oh God. When we rise, when we go throughout our day, God, even when we lie down at night, you're still good. Thank you. Oh God. Hallelujah. We don't have to be perfect for you, but you're perfect to us, God. You're perfect in all of your ways. Yes, you are. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. Yes, God. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect. You're a good, good father. This who you are. This who you are. This who you are. And I'm loved by you. This who I am. I'm loved. This who I am. This who I am. You're a good, good father. This who you are. This who you are. This who you are.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a good, good father. Hallelujah. Perfect in all of his ways. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, that you're perfect in all of your ways. Your ways are perfect. We thank you right now, Father. Hallelujah. That you are God that causes all things to work together for the good of them who love the Lord and who are called according to your purpose. We lift you up today, Father. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, that you are perfect in all of your ways. We thank you for your mercy, your faithfulness, God. Your faithfulness is new every morning, morning by morning, new mercies we see. We thank you, Father, that you are our Father, that your mercy endures forever. Your mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. It's not your will that any man should perish, but have everlasting life. Hallelujah. It's our desire to have your heart. Hallelujah. It's our desire, God, to instill and impart your love into in all humanity. We thank you, Father, for your love. We thank you for the love that's able to endure. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, that we are no longer slaves, that we are sons, that we are sons of God. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We cry, Abba, Father. We cry, Abba, Father. We thank you right now, Father, that you, imp you are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. Hallelujah. Your ways, hallelujah, are the best ways. Your ways are the ways of perfection. Your ways are the ways to destiny. Hallelujah. It's your way. You are the way. You are the way. There is a way that seems right to man. Hallelujah, but the end is destruction. You are the way. Hallelujah, your path is the path to perfection. And we thank you right now, Father. We bless your name. We honor you, Father. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah, we honor you. We exalt you above every idol. Hallelujah, above every idol in the land, above every idol that we may be even unaware that's in our hearts. We exalt you right now. You are worthy of honor. Hallelujah, you are worthy of praise. Hallelujah, we thank you for salvation. We thank you for emancipation. We thank you for liberating us. Hallelujah, we thank you, Father, for freedom. We thank you for freedom. Hallelujah, for who in who the sun sets free is free indeed oh we thank you father hallelujah perfect in all of your ways you're perfect in all of your ways to us to us to us to us to us to us you're perfect in all of your ways in all of your ways all of your ways hallelujah are perfect towards us they are for our advantage hallelujah they're for our future and even though as sometimes your ways may not seemly seem right but you are the creator you predestine us and you know what is best for us and for that god we thank you we praise you we give you glory hallelujah hallelujah wherever you at right there in your in your home wherever you at right now where you watching us on live just just praise him give him the glory give him the honor that belongs to him it belongs to you god it belongs to you god hallelujah thank you father thank you father we praise you hallelujah Hallelujah! 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 It doesn't matter what's going on. You deserve the praise. You deserve the honor. We praise you in the midst of a pandemic. We give you honor. You are worthy. You shall bring us out. Oh, you can bring us out. You shall carry us through. You shall deliver us. You shall bring us up. You shall bring us out. And we thank you. We praise your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
up and out up and out up and out oh hallelujah 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 i dare you to praise god right there where i i dare you to praise him hallelujah shackles shackles are falling off chains are being broken hallelujah depression is falling off of you every weight Every weight that tried to weigh you down and try to cause you to become weary, God is giving you the strength right now. The strength is in your praise. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him in the morning. We gotta get our praise back. Praise. Worship is good. You need worship. But praise. It also is an indication to the enemy. Satan. We got the victory. We got the victory. We got the victory. Praise and praise. Him. Praise God. Oh, praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He's worthy of the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your praise is an indication that in spite of my situation, my circumstance, I know that I have the victory. My, because he's my father, I'm entitled to victory. I'm more than a, because he's my father, I'm entitled to victory. I cannot lose. I, I cannot lose. I cannot lose. Whoa. I believe this is the greatest hour that the church is going is, is arising. The, the, re, the real church. The, the real the real saints that will that will move with, with such a joy in spite of what's what in spite of what's going on around us i'm not moved by it i'm not moved by it because i have evidence i have evidence that the world has not seen i walk by faith not by sight I, that's what i live by that's what i live by. faith that's what moves me Nothing, nothing the media says, I'm aware of it. I take it in, but it doesn't move me because I have evidence. You know, it's something about the court of law. You can't charge an individual with a certain crime if you don't have all the necessary evidence. And because we know there's some injustice in, in the justice system, but we know we serve a just God. Oh my God. So all the evidence that we have that even the world has not seen yet, we've seen it, God has revealed it to us. Oh, I got evidence, I got evidence. My God, I got evidence, I got evidence. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Father, for you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whoa, it's such a praise in the atmosphere in here. I don't know what I don't know what everything God is up to. But I got victory. I don't know about you. I don't I don't know about you. But I wish you would just wake up out of your slumber. Awake, awake, oh God. Awake out of your slumber, out of your sleep. We can no longer be distracted by what's going on. But you have to know in the midst of this, I got victory. I thank God for Impact Church, a victorious people. Hallelujah. A victorious people. This is not the time for murmuring and complaining, but this is the hour to of strength. This is this is the greatest season of your life. Don't throw, don't throw 2020 away. Don't, don't, don't throw 2020 away with the with the murmurers and with the complainers. And allow yourself to stay in the wilderness. Oh, and prolong your exit out, out, of, out of your wilderness season into the promised land. When God is trying to show you something. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank God for Impact Church Goldsboro. I, I thank God under the awesome leadership of Apostle Von Newsom and Apostle Catherine Newsom. Hallelujah. Happy Father's Day to all the great fathers out there. Happy Father's Day from Impact Church. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers at Impact Church Goldsboro Global. We honor you. We bless God for you. We honor our apostle, our spiritual father. We honor you, sir. We thank you for your prayers. We thank you for your push, for your correction. We thank you for being a man of in great integrity and character, a man of great vision, a man of great grace. And God is going to use you in such an uncommon way. Even in this, in this, even in this season, even God is turning the hearts of men that that rejected you and and they could have gave you opportunity and certain chances, and they locked those doors, but. This is the season that that grace of the sent one is God is going to commission you into places that once rejected you. They're going to need the wisdom. They're going to need the counsel that you have, sir. They're going to need it. They're going to need it in this hour. And there's going to be such a pull on you, but God's grace is sufficient. God's grace is sufficient. And I hear God say, get ready to be sent. Go in this my might. Go in this thy might. And there's going to be even a greater grace, even as it was amongst the apostles. A, a greater grace, even on the both of you. I'm telling you, even as you're about to go to Africa, there's going to be a greater grace. of, And, and even as you get, you're about to get sent, God says, there shall not be a reversal. That's not gonna. That's not gonna be a reversal. But the the sending, the arrows of the limits. The whole time God's been pulling you back. Get ready to be launched, launched into places to deliver my people. Launched, launched in in territories and in regions that you haven't even yet thought about yourself or God hasn't given you but get ready to get launched for you are my arrows of deliverance hallelujah hallelujah thank you father thank you father hallelujah welcome to impact church Goldsboro global we are people that are making an impact in the great city of Goldsboro. There is gold in Goldsboro. And what many people don't understand is, you know, we often look at trash or we look at places that don't seem worthy of the investment. 
and those are the places. God, you know, God said, he said even in his word, he didn't call the noble. He didn't call the mighty. And see, when you understand about God, God, or, or he'll, he'll, he'll send a prophet to go anoint the, the king of Israel, someone that doesn't look like what everyone else thinks or what is everyone else's preference. It says, and this is the hour that God is saying, no, these are not the ones. These are not the ones that, that, that should receive the oil. These aren't the, these aren't the, these are the ones that should receive the oil. That God is calling in this hour for the, for the rejected. Those that have been rejected by man's systems. By systems man have structured themselves. And have tried to keep God's will and his leadership out of. And God says, no, that's not the one. That's, that, though, that's not the one. These are not the ones that, and see, the oil is about to locate you. See, the oil located David. See, it's one thing about when people, they, they, call, they go looking for an impartation. And God says, no, nah, you're not the one that's going to receive it. Because people have a preference and they, they want a particular person to anoint them. Oh, but the oil in this hour is coming from heaven. And in heaven, God's approval, oh my, he doesn't approve everyone. And the oil is coming to locate you. Oh, glory to God. Uh, I've been given the assignment to do a series on prayer. Um, I'm quite privileged and quite honored um, for that, that privilege. And um. I pray that it has um, inspired everyone and has really provoked you to get into a place of prayer. Prayer, especially in this time, is so necessary, it's so vital. Prayer has always been necessary, especially in the life of a believer. Because how can an individual say that they are following Jesus and you have abandoned your prayer closet, or, you know, you have a negligent prayer life. How can you say that you are following Jesus, the one whom the Bible basically describes in so many situations that he went up into a mountain to pray? That, you know, it talks about Jesus praying so much more than about him prophesying, about him preaching, about him performing miracles, which Jesus did that, you know, um, quite often. But Jesus quite often pray too and, and you know in the bible it gives us the responsibility it basically give us a command to pray that we should pray without ceasing you know that we should pray without ceasing you know our prayer life should never cease men should always pray and not faint i believe one of the reasons that demonic agenda has strengthened the momentum of it has strengthened and it you know, the enemy's schemes have gained momentum is because we have become faint in the area of prayer. But I really believe that this is the hour that God is, is breathing on the prayer lives of the saints, though, especially of those that have become weary. The, the scripture states that he gives power to the faint. We, we've allowed certain situations in our life to cause us to become faint. It, it seems like it's a scheme of the enemy to cause us to become so disturbed by, by things that are going on in our world today that you don't, you don't necessarily just have to pray at home and just set a, a, set a, set a, a time out to pray at home, but you have a relationship with God. You know, the Bible says that Adam walked with God in the cool of the day. It is, it is about a relationship, about being conscious of, of, of the voice of God, of being one that is filled with the scriptures. If my words abide in you and you abide in me, then you can ask what you will. It's about having a heart, you know, that is obedient to the scriptures with the word of God, that the word of God is, is written on the tablets of your heart, that is hid in your heart, and you also marry that with prayer. It's, it's, so, it's so important. That's one of the ways that that's, that's also intimacy. That's why even in, in loud places or it seems like the noise of everything else around us is louder than our conversations amongst each other 
it still will not drown out the voice of God because I got the Holy Ghost on the inside and I got the word that is hid. Oh my God. I got the word hid in my heart so I can hear God on a daily basis. Even when I'm at work, God can give me a download. He can give me a revelation because I'm seeking him. I'm praying him. That's an intimate place. That's walking close with God because he is the word. Oh, my God. He is the word. Oh, so I want us to go to the book of um, Acts chapter 12. Acts chapter 12, starting at the first verse. Uh, it says now about the time Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church now uh, Bible says that Herod he stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church now this was done because it was politically popular for Herod it pleased many of his citizens who didn't like Christians at all. Many political figures are ready to persecute Christians if it will make them politically popular. And see, dealing with prayer, and especially what I really believe that God is doing in this hour, yes, the body of Christ, the church, is, is, is thriving. We're, we're thriving. You know, our businesses are thriving. And even with some churches not fully open like some are, that, that, you know, the ministry's thriving. I mean, even financially, you have people that are even joining ministries and the church hasn't even reopened yet. People, people, you know, because really this has been an exodus season for those that were scared to leave a certain church due to witchcraft, due to control. This is their time of deliverance and freedom. And, you know, and many that are trying to, be in the will of God and follow God and be under the proper leadership. This is the greatest time, you know, to flee that, that slavery, that witchcraft, and that bondage, and that control that they was under. And get under a leader that can develop you. Get under the leader that can, that can pull oil on your head. Get under a leader that's not even scared of you. Get under a lick, my God. Get on a leader that can, can shift your life. It's so important to be on a proper leadership. The Bible says that, you know, many are following, you know, those that don't have a vision at all. The only thing they have a vision for is to, to build a, 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 a bigger facility. But they, they don't have a vision for the community. They don't even, they, you know, they don't even see where you're going. They don't know your identity. They can't speak into your life. They can't empower you. They can't inspire you. When they speak, nothing moves on the inside of you. They don't awaken anything in you. They don't impart. There's no succession plan. My God, it's time for the church to rise and get back to kingdom. Oh, because, you know, one thing, you know, the, the problem is, and, you know, with most religious people, see, a whole lot of people, they think they kingdom, and, you know, they've been saved for a long time, and they're really religious, and this is the hour of reformation where a lot of religious systems are being confronted, and can I tell you, that was one of the problems, even with the apostles, and yes, with Jesus, with dealing with religious Pharisees, Sadducees, spirits, demons, you know, when you confront systems and, and former traditions and laws, that they withheld and when you're doing things that seemingly seem like it's outside of your law your tradition that has always been set up and you think it's not God and the whole time it's God like 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 you God or or, or like you predestined a person's life and their purpose and then most of them don't, are not even aware of who you are can't 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 do nothing they don't, they don't even have an impartation for your life they lack wisdom and vision and some people they have been in ditches so long they're so used to wallowing in mud. They don't even they don't even have, you know, even an appetite for destiny. Have an appetite for the future. Have an appetite for the loss. Want to reach the loss. Want to win the loss. They don't have an appetite for it. All you care about is just going to church week after week, shouting and dancing and bucking, and ain't even delivered. It's time. I'd, I'd, 
The Bible says that Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. That was his agenda to vex the church because it was politically popular for Herod. Now, we're, we're in a time, you know, we're dealing with politics. And, you know, people are, are when, when it comes to persecution, I really believe that that's what God is preparing his church for. Because even as we thrive, you know, even as souls begin to come into the kingdom and begin to be converted, and the population, you know, even of Christianity, you know, even, even as Christianity begins to increase and we begin to take over regions and cities and people, you know, that even practice other beliefs and other religions, you know, even in political fields, that they start uh, serving the God we serve. It starts to deserve some po certain politicians because they, because of the decisions and the, manip the manipulation that they use against God's people will be overturned and be confronted because you got believers, oh my God, in the political field. And see, the, the persecution, I believe, is one thing that God is getting his church ready for. And I don't believe that really the state that, that, that we're in now is that we're really ready for that persecution, really ready to handle it. Because we deal with a lot of fragile Christians. If we just be frank, if we just be honest, so many offended believers. I mean, you can look on social media all day. We attacking each other. Um, so many fragile believers. Everyone thinks somebody's out to get them. Someone don't like them. You don't like somebody. Oh, my God. But you got Jesus on the inside. I don't understand it. You know, um, uh, let me let me. Let me see. I mean, let me say it pleased many of his citizens who didn't like Christians. Many political figures are ready to persecute Christians. Don't 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 think that they're not. They are ready to persecute Christians. Like I said, as 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 the kingdom advances in the earth, as we advance, as we begin to buy buildings, buy back. See, when we begin to not depend on the systems of this world. <laughs> oh my, when we when they see that the kingdom of God begins to arise, that's when you know, and people begin to be converted, souls begin to be get saved. And like I said, even when you have politicians that once believed or once was in their witchcraft, their control and their manipulation, they're once converted. When you have people in authority positions, once they convert it, like, like, like the Gentile Cornelius, who, who, who was converted. They, they was offended that, that, that he got converted. And see, it was a problem with them because he wasn't a Jew. He wasn't like them. <sighs> this is the underlying Deception and things that we that we that we're dealing with now, and especially as it relates. You no, know, I'm I don't call myself a, a political man, but um, God just showed me these things, um, as it relates to the, the political field. And and the persecution that shall ar shall arise, but I'm going to show you, um, through the text. That's why it's so important to for, for prayer. Prayer is so needed before. I mean, we need wisdom. We need action. Um, everything else, we, we need that. But we need intercessors. We need those that, we need the church to pray. We need the church to pray. We need the body of Christ to really pray. We have prayer, all type of prayer movements. But are we really being really effective? And re are really, because I believe that our prayers really are effective when they are to God, first and foremost, and when they are earnest prayers. Last week, we talked about fervency. You know, how the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man, how it produces, produces. So anything that, that produces, you're going to see an effect or, or manifestation of, of something occur, of, of something happen. 
Because, you know, every time when I read in the Bible, you know, when the saints, when the church prays, something supernatural happened. God intervened in the earth, you know, and it's time out for, you know, these, these prayers that are not fervent. I told you last week, the only temperature that your prayer life should be is set on fervent. We, we have to have a fervent prayer life, you know, when, when you know, when daily we, we're walking with God. You know, in the cool of the day. But I, our prayers are fervent. Our prayers, because those are the prayers, the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous man. You know, they produce tremendous power, tremendous power. For God to be able to intervene into the affairs of the earth. And, and that's, that's, those, are, those are the kind of prayers that we need. In verse 2, it says, and he killed. James, the brother of John, with the sword. Now, James, he was the first apostle to be martyred. He was the first apostle to be a martyr. James, he was beheaded. See, what we have to understand is that the devil is after your voice. He's after authority. Those that are in authority positions. And see, the problem today is we have... A lot of leaders, now I know I'm, our, our leaders are not like, you know, they, they are in positions of authority and they have that authority. And the, the problem today is we have a lot of leaders and people in positions but lack authority. They don't have the authority. God didn't place them there at all. And so if, you know, if you have a person in a position, that's just compromising authority. That's, that's compromising authority. And then it's allowing you know, the enemy to have authorization into a place that he shouldn't be in at all. Because if you really have authority, oh my, even the, de the demons, they knew when Jesus, they knew Jesus was a man of authority. They know it was certain things that they could not do in certain places that they could not go. And when Jesus spoke, he didn't have to lay hands. All Jesus had to do was speak because he was in that position of authority. That's another reason why the centurion soldier, even him, with him being a centurion, he knew Jesus had authority. All you had to do was send your word. All you had to do was sit because I know you are an authority figure. I know you have authority. I am a man under authority. Oh. And say, in order to have authority, you got to be under. You, you have a lot of people, preachers, prophets. My God, they claim to have authority, but they're not under authority. And they have a lot of people fooled and deceived, thinking that they have authority because of a title, and you're not under. Where your oil coming from? Where, where is your oil coming from? Jiffy Lou. James was the first to be martyred. He was the first apostle. But one reason why James didn't have to be replaced like Judas is because he was a faithful apostle. He, he was a faithful apostle. And see, I believe what God is raising up in this hour is, is martyrs. That we know we have to, to, to die is to gain. And Jesus said, if you want to follow me, you have to first deny yourself. You know, you had to pick up your cross. You know, we all see the thing is we have to be willing to die. We have to be willing to die to our will and into our ways. But, you know, I don't believe that is necessarily a physical death, but it could it could get to that point. See, it could get to that point. You have um, believers, you have believers in other countries dying for the faith. Being martyred. You know, and, and then even when you look at those in Afghanistan, the little children, they even raised up that be strapped with bombs on them they, to be martyred, to die for the cause, to die for a, a, a principle that they believe in. And see, what you have to understand, a martyr is a person who is put to death or endures great suffering on behalf of any belief, principle or cause. And see, this is why the first century church was so powerful, because they was willing to die for the cause. It was a principle. Jesus called me. They walked with the man. They seen what he did. They, see, they, see him, they saw how he moved in miracles. 
They, they, they were so dedicated and committed to their responsibility, to their call as an apostle, that they was willing to die for it. But we have those today that want to call themselves something, or they want to believe that they're something, but they're not willing to be martyred. They're not willing to die for the cause. But I really believe that God in this hour, that he's raising up a type of an apostle, a type of leader, a, a, a type of believer even, that doesn't even have a title. I'm a son of God, that I'm willing to die. I'm willing to die for the cause. Like I said, if we, we, have other, we have other beliefs, and in other countries, they're willing to die. Come over here and get bombs strapped on them and die for that cause. We, we have soldiers in the United States Army willing to die for that country. That's a form of being martyred. But, but we have believers. And we, we see right here, we read in the Bible. We first have, we, when you have Stephen, when, when he first get, he first get martyred, he's one of the first, even though he wasn't an apostle. But, but James, he was the first apostle to get martyred. And see, what we have to understand is, is that it was prophesied to him by Jesus what was going to happen to him. Don't you remember James and his brother John, the one that wanted to sit on the left and the right hand? See, those that looked at Jesus' ministry and they wanted a prestigious position. Oh, oh in, in these days and time, they wanted a platform. Oh, my God, they wanted an invite. They saw how Jesus moved and how he preached and everything that he did. And I want to be popular like Jesus. I want fame like him. Let me sit. Let me and my brother, you know, the, the, the sons of Zebedee, you know, that mother came to Jesus and asked, let my, you know, let my son sit, sit on the right and the left hand of you. And they thought that they was ready and able to do it. But this was something that Jesus had not even partaken himself. You got people today that want to do something that leaders haven't even done yet. Oh, my God. My leader. Oh, my God. My leader hasn't even drunk him from the cup. But you want to drunk from. You don't even you don't even know what you're asking for. They had to be prepared for it. They had, they had to be prepared for and see, that's why it's so important to, you know, you look at other people's lives and, you know, the graces on their life and what God called them to do and you want to do it. Oh, my God. But are you willing, are you ready to really drink? Do you have the intestinal fortitude to be able to swallow? Oh, my God. Are you old enough to get drunk? Oh, my God. Can you really handle what's in this cup? And can you be baptized with the baptism that I'm going to be baptized with? Are you willing to die the death? Are you willing to go the depth of my death? Are you willing to be baptized with the baptism that I was baptized with? That's what Jesus asked him. And they told him they, they was ready. And see, this is one of, of the consequences or the responsibilities of those that walk close with him. Because understand... You know, we desire, and yes, he wants us to draw nigh unto him, to walk close. Because when you walk close to God, God reveals things to you. He, 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 gives, he gives you revelation. And with that revelation, you know, with that kind of understanding, with that kind of wisdom, that kind of grace, that kind of anointing comes a responsibility. It, it, comes, it also comes a commitment. You know, and that's why it also calls for a level of maturity. And if you're not ready, you know, if you're not ready, then God can't reveal that to you. He can't, you know, you need just some stuff that you just can't tell people, but they walk close with them. Because you got to understand, they were the ones that Jesus took up to the Mount of Transfiguration. They were the ones in the Garden of Gethsemane with Jesus, and he asked them three to watch and pray. They was the three that walked close with Jesus at a, at a, on an intimate level. And see, when you walk on that intimate level with Jesus, it might cost you your head. 
It, it might cost you some, some attacks. It might cost you some demonic warfare that you know that you really have to be prepared for. But you have to understand by this time, James was ready for it. He could drink from the cup because he drunk it. And see that that drinking from that his cup caused him to be beheaded. In verse 3, it says, and because he saw, it pleased the Jews. See, Herod, like I said, he was looking for popularity at that time on a political view. And see, the, it pleased the Jews that he had vexed certain of the church and also that he had beheaded James. Now, you know, this baffled me because you really have, you know, to study the Bible because you'd you be like, it pleased the Jews? Because like I was saying earlier, it pleased the Jews because the, the apostles, even up, up until chapter 12, there were so many conversions happening. The kingdom of God was advancing. You know, they didn't like the evangelism of, of the apostles, that they would evangelize and talk to certain people that they think that they shouldn't talk to or they shouldn't convert it. Like, like I said um, the Gentile centurion Cornelius got converted by them. And they did not think, the Jews did not think that he should have received the gospel. So they was really opposing the apostles. They, they was opposing their, their ministry. They was opposing their message. They was opposing the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this was one of the reasons why the apostles was always locked up. You know, this wasn't you know, even going further down in the scripture, this wasn't their first time being in prison. But every time, even, even when they got free, they went right back out and done the same exact thing. You know, I remember, you know, doing my times of incarceration and getting locked up and doing crime. See, how we can't be that much, you know, dedicated and committed to the gospel. I would get, I would get locked up, get back out. Keep smoking weed, keep selling drugs, keep running the streets as soon as I, but see how much more, you know, even after, even when you get delivered from something, the devil may have you bound. And once you get delivered, oh my God, we go right back doing the same exact thing. And see, this is what the commitment was because they was apostles. You know, it's something about when God called you, you can't shake the calling. You can't run away from it. You know, it's like other people can smell that, that you, you, you don't, what you doing? You don't belong there. Look at you like, what you doing? When you're trying to do something that they doing and you know you don't fit in. When, you, when you're trying to fit in with the world, when you're trying to fit in with everyone else because, you know, you just got to accept your difference. You know, my mold, my, my mold is not the mold you came out of. You know, and the problem is today, everyone wants to fit everyone else's mold. You got to embrace your difference, your uniqueness. God made me different. No, I don't sound like you. I don't look like you. I don't dress like you. I don't like what you eat. I don't listen to what you listen to. My God, I'm, I'm different. I'm just different. I'm different. We need difference. We need uniqueness. We need authenticity. One of the problems today, people do not want to be original. They don't want to be authentic. You know, they just want to copy everything. But, you know, it, you know I, I really shouldn't get offended if they copy me. I should get mad when they don't. Because if they copy me, I know I'm doing something right. Some people just get, you know, oh, they copy. I mean, even though it's not right, but I must inspire them in some way. That's a compliment. You know, after a while, you know, you're going to get exposed, you know, but I'm sitting back looking. Right. And so because he saw that it pleased the Jews, seeing his increased popularity, he saw his popularity increase. You know, and at the end of this text, you know, King Harry, he was a man that was seeking popularity. You know, he, he was seeking popularity. And because, like I said, the, the conversion of, of people 
until the kingdom was happening at a rapid rate. I really believe that we're in the hour, we're in that season where the harvest is plenty. We are about, we are in that season that I'm telling you the, the, the harvest is plenty. You know, the hearts of people are ripe. This is an hour to spread the gospel. This is an hour to prophesy. This is an hour, you know, we can use even while we're not in church to begin to allow God to speak through us and use us and begin to move on the hearts of men, to begin, begin to prick the hearts of men. You know, why I'm, not, I'm not, not in church. You just can't get, you know. This this one of, this one of the hours of of, of great evangelism. I, I really believe that we should be using this time to evangelize like never before. So many, you know, have, have ran back into the church. I mean, no problem with that at all. The local church is one of the greatest entity on the face of the earth, and you know, the world it will soon see. The local church is essential and a necessity in the earth. You know, I, I know, you know, you've, the church you've been in all your life has, has been a religious one, ha, has been one where God's glory has not been at, has been one built by man, yeah, built by man, you know, but the presence of God ain't there. Nobody is free. You know, God didn't call that certain leader that's there, but, you know, I'm just going to get up there. I'm going to. I'm going to get off of that, you know, because the, the, the mockery, the, the mockery, you know, is, is about to cease. The mockery is the mockery is ceasing. And those that did doubt and did have unbelief shall believe. In verse three, it, because it, it increased his popularity when he killed James. Herod sought to improve his ratings even more when he proceeded further to seize Peter also. So he seized Peter. And verse 4 says, and when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quartorians of soldiers to keep him. See, he had, see Peter, Peter needed extra security because b- before Peter escaped with just two. See, this time he needed four. And, you know, before Peter, you know, he escaped with just two. So, so Herod was aware of that. He knew, you know, that Peter had escaped before. So this time, Peter need extra security. He need extra see, That's one thing about the enemy. One, once God frees you and delivers you one time, you know, he would try to, he, he would try to strengthen his agenda. He will try to strengthen his bondage on you. But I know God with the son who the son sets free is free indeed. God is a God that will emancipate, will liberate you, will, will bring you to a place of freedom and liberty. It doesn't matter how, how much in bondage you've been. So you have some people today, they feel like, you know, that they can never get out of the oppressive state that they're in. Or, you know, because it's been like this all of my life, you know, this is the only life for me. You know, when life is not for me, I don't see a future. I don't see a way out. You know, you feel in prison. In verse 5, it says, Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer. Oh, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. It said, but prayer, see, even though they may have not had the money to pay Peter out of jail, they had the power to pray Peter out of jail. The Bible says that they prayed without ceasing the church. And this is why it's so important. You know, leader, leadership in this hour, especially when you have an apostolic assignment, you need the church to pray for. You need intercessors. You need those that can build a wall of prayer behind you because the, the apostles, they was taking over cities. 
You know, even the Bible, it talks about that these were the ones that turned the world upside down. They literally turned over cities and regions, you know, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, converting people. You know, you know, when, when Peter stood up and preached, I mean, 3,000 people got saved at one time when they got filled with the Holy Ghost. We're in the days of great revival, of great reformation, where God is calling this church to, to a place of prayer earnest prayer you know with those earnest prayers with where your prayers is reaching out to God we got to get back to a place of earnest prayer earnest earnest prayer where our prayers we praying without ceasing and, and we, I really have to emphasize that because most of our prayer lives have ceased our, our prayer you know our leaders are dependent upon our lead, upon our prayers and see, that's another thing that keeps, you know, the, 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 the momentum, you know, even of the, you know, apostolic mo mo momentum advancing. In verse 6, it says, <clears throat> and when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell from, from his hands. I want to go to verse 10. <clears throat> and, when they were, and when they were past the first and the second ward, they came into the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. See, because of the prayers of, of the church, the prayers, the Bible says that the church prayed without ceasing. Those, those prayers from the church, it summons an angel from God to, to liberate Peter miraculously, miraculously. And see, whenever, you know, the enemy um, has an agenda to restrain or uh, try to hinder or stagnate or keep apostolic mo vision and momentum stagnant, you know, it needs the prayers of the church because the, the, the apostles have a, a angelic assistance. Angelic, and see, and those prayers from the church will keep that momentum, will, will keep the, the, the apostolic ministry um, free and liberated and will keep the, the momentum and the advancement, the mobility. See, we, we, need, we need leadership mobile and, and not stagnant and not hindered by, by demonic activity and, and by attacks. And see, that's why it's so imperative for the church, the, 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 the saints of God, to continue to pray, to pray without ceasing. Because it was the prayers from the church that caused God to summon the angel to rescue Peter. To keep apostolic mobility. Because in verse 10, it says, and when they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. See, understand this. It was an iron gate that opened to the city. And the Bible says that it opened on its own accord. On its, on its own accord. What we have to understand is that Peter had an angel with him. This, this was an iron gate that led him to the city. And see, what the enemy did not want was Peter to be free. He wanted Peter to be in prison because he wanted apostolic ministry to not be effective in the city. Oh, my God. He wanted apostolic ministry to be in prison. He didn't want it to, to no longer disrupt his systems. Didn't no longer want you know, the people in the city to be converted, to be healed. But King Herod, he wanted the popularity of the people. Uh, see, th this is what we have to understand about, you know, persecution. Whenever the, the kingdom of, of God starts advancing, and now God is with us. God is on our side. 
You know, even though we may be persecuted, even though we may be afflicted, it's still going to cause us to grow. It's going to still going to cause us to strengthen. See, this is what people don't understand. But it says that the gate, it opened to it with, with its own accord. And I believe that there's some things, you know, even in this city, you know, as we pray, as we pray without ceasing, some, some things that are going to open up automatically. Some things that tried to be, some things that the enemy or, you know, even those in this city, in certain regions, tried to keep closed. But our prayers, you know, and with angelic assistance is going to cause those things to open automatically. Oh, I wish I had some people to believe that some things in my life, in this city, some opportunities, some doors that I've been waiting on to open, some gates. Uh, that was closed are about to open automatically. Oh my God, they're about to lead us into the city. And passed through one, one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. Verse 11, and when Peter was come to himself, he said, now, I know of a surety that the Lord have sent his angel and have delivered me out. Because Peter was there. See, one thing that amazed me even about Peter, Peter wasn't even moved by him being in bondage. The Bible said that he was asleep. When, when Peter was chained with the soldiers, he was so, you know, that's why we have to be so committed. How many of us would have been so disturbed? I am, you know, waiting to be executed, waiting to be beheaded. You know, at the right opportunity because Herod was waiting for, you know, the Passover to pass over. And he was going to bring Peter that time because he didn't want to start a riot within the community at that particular time, knowing that he had Peter. And so he waited. But even with him going back to the prison looking for Peter, Peter was gone. Peter, but Peter was asleep. Peter was asleep there in the prison, handcuffed. I remember time getting locked up, and I knew I wasn't going nowhere. Nobody was going to bail me out. So I just got on that bunk and went to sleep. But God, Peter said, yeah, Peter just got set there and got some rest. You just, you just causing me to get revitalized and energized for my next assignment. Because I know I'm not going to stay here because it was also a prophecy to Peter that he was going to die old. And see, this is why we have to also, uh, we, that, that word that's over your life, it doesn't matter what situation you're in. It may seem that you're about to die, that the enemy is about to cancel your life. But I have a prophecy over my life. Peter had a prophecy from Jesus himself that he was going to die an old man. And he believed Jesus that much. I, be, I, I, I walked with him. I seen what the man could do. I believe every word that he said out of his mouth. When everyone else left him, I said, where are we going to go? You have the words to, of eternal life. Yeah. And that's why we can't listen to the devil. That's why we can't listen to anything and anybody that, that's speaking outside of the prophecy right. over my life. Verse 12, and it says, and when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. He came to the house where they were praying at. And I really believe that this is a season that even while we're praying that the answer is going to show up. It's going to show up unexpectedly. The things that we've been praying for, the things that we've been, been believing God for, that the, the answer is going to come looking for us. And just like Peter did, Peter went to, to the house where they were praying. And see, that's why it's so important to be found praying. The answer they, they was looking for found them praying. Oh, my God. It's something about, well, I'm, I'm at home and I'm praying to God about the thing that I need him to, 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 to do in my life. And it shows up. And see, I really believe even, you know, I really believe even th this is for our, our, our family members that we've been praying for. 
that have been in bondage, even those that are in prison. Oh, my God. I wish you would even would receive this because I hear God say he's about to he's about to free a whole lot of, you know, a whole lot of people that have been counted out, you know, that have been looked over. that have have been looked over because of the activity. What we have to understand about God, God never ties a person's identity to their activity, what you do to who you are. And so even what Peter was even while Peter was in prison. The church was praying, and I really believe that this is the hour that God is about to save and deliver and liberate and bring even those of our family members that we've been praying for. He's about to liberate them. And they're about to show up, the very ones that you've been praying for. They're they about, they about to come to the ones that have been praying for them, just like Peter did. Peter went to the house where they were praying at. The answer that they was praying for showed up at the house that was praying. We looking for an answer. We want God to move, but are we praying? In verse 13, it says, And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a dancer came to hearken named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. Verse 15, and they said unto her, thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then said they, it is his angel. Verse 16, but Peter continued knocking. And when they opened the door and saw him. They were astonished. They didn't even believe that it was Peter. And that, that's one of the main problems with our prayers. With our, you know, our prayers cannot be to God if we don't have the faith to believe God what we're praying for. You know, and when the very thing showed up that they was praying for, they did not believe that it was him. You know, we, we call prayer meetings. They, they had a prayer meeting. They was praying for, for Peter to, to, to be set free. When Peter comes to the house that they were praying for, they don't believe that it was Peter. They, 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 they believed a, a negative report. They, see, the, it, it shows that they was, looking, they was praying, but they was looking for a negative report. Because when Rhoda came and told them that, that Peter was outside, they didn't believe. They didn't believe the very thing that they were supposedly to be praying for. You know, how many times have we been praying to God? You know, we, you can't even be in the presence of God, it, you know, and, and leave without an answer or, or knowing that God is going to grant me my request or my petition or even believe, you know, what you're praying for. How? Who are we praying to? Who, who are we conversing with if, if the very thing that we supposedly be praying for shows up and we don't believe? Who are we praying to? This is one of the problems with the church today. This is why it's so important to get back to prayer, to, to know the, the voice of God, and to also do not allow the things that you see because the things that you see are temporal. The evidence that we have is unseen. The evidence that we have is unseen. And that's basically what prayer is. It causes God to intervene into the affairs of the earth, into the affairs of men, because we have the evidence. It may not be seen, but we have the evidence. And we cannot allow the things that we see, you know, and the things that happen and have happened to cause our faith to become weary and weak. We must marry prayer also with faith. Or who, who are we communing with? Who are we talking to? Who are we believing? And so, I mean, they didn't, they didn't believe that Peter was outside. They was expecting Peter to be executed. And this is why our, our prayers have to be to God and they have to be earnest. It's so important. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father, we thank you. Hallelujah, Father, we thank you, we praise you. We thank you right now, Father. 
Hallelujah. We thank you that we can go boldly before the throne of grace and obtain mercy. Hallelujah. This is the season. This is the hour that you're calling us back to prayer, to a place of intimacy, to a place of praying without ceasing. Hallelujah. Father, we repent right now for, for, for anywhere in our lives, in our devotional lives, that we have ceased praying, knowing that you have called us to pray without ceasing, that you said in your word that men ought to always pray and not faint. We, we, we repent right now, Father, where we have doubted, where we've lacked the necessary faith in what we have requested from you, from our very petition, Father. We repent right now, God, and we are aligning with your word. We are aligning with what you said, knowing that your word shall accomplish the very thing that it was sent out to do. It shall not return back to us void. We know that your word, heaven and earth, shall pass away, but your word, that it shall be fulfilled over our lives. We thank you, Father, that we can go into the secret place of the Most High, and we can abide under the shadow of the almighty we thank you father for the ability to be able to commune with you for the ability to be able to hear your voice you are the god that answers by fire today we build an altar we be we rebuild an altar we we abolish every idol and every altar outside of you everything that we have allowed to take place and take seat in our hearts Hallelujah. And today we exalt you on the throne of our hearts, on the throne of our hearts, on the throne of our hearts. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Call Pastor Dia up. God bless you. Hallelujah. Can we just give God praise for that powerful word? Hallelujah. Bless your name, oh God. Thank you for the download. God, that word was so mean and so relevant. And we bless the name of the Lord. We pray a special prayer of protection and covering over the prophet poured out. We know that uh, retaliation tries to come when you have to bring forth and break up such ground as that. So we pray a special prayer of protection over him right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Let no hurt, harm, or danger come not his dwelling. Cover him and his family, oh God. And replenish him, oh God, for everything that he poured out, oh God. We pray that you bless him threefold, oh God. Three hundredfold, oh God. Bless him even the more, oh God. Bless him in his mind. Bless him in his spirit, oh God. Continue to give him clear vision, oh God. Continue to speak into his ear as he opens his mouth and declares out into this land, oh God, your word, your heart, your mind, God. Hallelujah. We thank you right now, oh God, that you'll continue to strengthen him as he works for you in this earth, oh God, as he does your will in this earth, oh God. We know sometimes that the, the labor of the prophets is not easy, God. We understand the attacks that they may come, um, come into, oh God, but we thank you right now that you have fortified your prophets, oh God. You have strengthened their hearts for journeys such as this, oh God. We thank you right now that his mouth will continue to declare your word, hallelujah, with power and demonstration in the mind in the name of Jesus. I also stand to pray and cover every father, every son. Hallelujah. I was reminded of the prodigal, the one that was reckless and, and spent lavishly and he went out on his own, had no thought for his future. He was just caught up in the moment. And we see a lot of that going on in the earth now where there are a lot of fatherless sons because there are a lot of absent fathers.
fathers. But on today, we pray and even cover them right now in the mighty name of Jesus, as in the Bible, when it said he came to himself. So we send that prayer out right now that all fathers come to themselves and that, that they return to the Father to be fathers and to be fathered. We thank you right now, oh God, that um, the hand of oppression comes off of their minds, that the hand of oppression comes off of their spirits, that the hand of oppression comes off of their necks, and that they return to who they are called to be, oh God, that they take their rightful place, oh God. We thank you right now, oh God, that every opposing force that has called them to go astray, God, that they're arrested by your word right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Strengthen their heart, oh God, and take the mouth of the naysayers off of them right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Those that speak about where they are and how they've been, God, we take the mouths off of your men and your fathers, oh God, and we speak life into them right now. It doesn't matter what they've done. It doesn't matter where they've gone and how they've been astray, God, but we see where they're coming to, oh God. We see that they're returning to their rightful place. We see that they will take a stand, God, in their homes, oh God, in the land, God, in the communities, oh God. We thank you now that the sons are returning to the Father to be fathers in the name of Jesus in a way that we've never seen before, God. We won't keep remembering what they've done and where they've been, God, but we'll celebrate them on their arrival, oh God. We'll celebrate their return, oh God. We'll lay out the fatty cow for them, oh God. We'll lay out the robe and the ring for them, God. We will honor them, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you for the return of the Father in the name of Jesus. Glory to your name, oh God. Teach us to honor those, God, that are absent. Teach us to honor those that may be lost. Hallelujah. With our hearts and with our mouths, we honor in the name of Jesus. We were once lost ourselves, oh God. Hallelujah. So how dare we continue to bash and talk against people in general, God, but especially the Thank you. Hallelujah. For a spirit of return in the name of Jesus. And it is so. Can we just put our hands Hallelujah. Come on and bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The spirit of the return. Hallelujah. They are coming back. They are coming back. Ready, ready, ready to make their places. Ready to do what's necessary to move forward. Ready to take the rightful place in the lives of their families. Ready. Hallelujah. To be who you called them to be. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. And it is so. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Can we just praise the Lord one more time for this awesome, awesome, awesome word that we heard today, the prayers that have gone forth. And I just want to thank you all who have tuned in with us, who have joined us from Impact Global. And we just, can we give it up for those who tune in with us every Sunday who are going forward with us? And we ask that if you would like to partner with us in any way, be sure to check out the comment at the bottom of the screen. If you would like to sow, we have shown you multiple ways you can sow with us. And if you'd like to partner, if you desire salvation, please send us a DM. Remember, we will be back right here next week, same time, same place. And even this Wednesday, you can tune in with us as we return to corporate prayer. Hallelujah. Thank God for prayer. And we, we love you all so much. Thank you for joining us. Remember, come back same time, same place next week, and we will see you then.